Hi, I'm Judith, and I'm so glad you're here with me today, and I'm going to be talking to you about anxiety, and it's something that I've been talking to you about more often lately because it seems like so many of us women face this in some way or another, and Jesus wants to free you from an anxiety, and that's the thing we're going to be talking about today. He would love to free you from your anxiety, and you might have anxiety over different things or for different reasons, and it can have like a, a really strong power over your life and he likes to take away what's troubling you over and over again the Israelites would go away from God and they would do evil in his sight and the minute they would cry out God just would come in and help them and help them with the battles they were facing and in the same way he can help you with the battle that you're facing and so he just loves to take away what's troubling you and when you're experience, experiencing anxiety every day and it can be for different reasons it can be over the safety of your children or your grandchildren or your safety in a car or just over events a lot of times in the future that you don't know what's going to happen and it's sort of a way of trying to be in control and control it so that something bad doesn't happen and so um, you might know all the answers and tried all the ways to relieve the tensions that are in your lives but you still have that anxiety there and I'd like to give you a simple formula that will remove the anxieties from your life but sometimes it's just not so easy a formula can sort of work but not really but we're a lot of times what will work is the Bible and going to the Bible every time it may not be like your anxiety problems leave you but you'll have a solution that you can go to every time that you face those things and so Matthew 17 20 um, is a verse that really is powerful and it, what I'm going to share is easy it's all you have to do is to have faith and it's simple but yet it can be totally complicated for so many of us because our faith is smaller than a mustard seed. A mustard seed is a really, really tiny seed. But Matthew 17, 20 says, He said to them, because of your t little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible impossible for you and my mother used to have a little small little magnifying round ball necklace and inside that was a mustard seed and the glass was like magnified the, the size of the mu mustard seed and she could wear it and remember this verse that talks about our faith all it has to be is as big as that tiny tiny little mustard seed and we can have the faith that we need to have Jesus help us we have to have faith because he does things for us when we have faith when we don't have faith it, it's like there's not the starting point so as women we struggle more than men with the issue of, of anxiety I do believe and that is why it's so important to tackle this and and to learn to live fearlessly because to live fearlessly you want to stand up to your anxiety and face them with the Lord so number one is a lack of faith in your Heavenly Father Hebrews three twelve says beware brethren lest there be anxiety of you of an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God and you don't want to, to depart from the living God or just depart in the sense that you your faith that you don't believe he can help you so belief is such a simple an answer to anxiety so just to believe to have faith ten years ago I was in a minor car accident and since then certain situations like zipping in and out of high-speed traffic can be terrifying to me and what am I afraid of the accident or injury, death, these are questions that we need to ask ourselves over whatever it is that's holding us captive in that anxiety. And the solution is so simple and yet so hard to reach. Esther 4.16 says, I should have the attitude of Esther 
if I perish, I perish. And I can't say I'm there yet. I don't have that attitude because I can get pretty fearful over certain things. So it is just that simple and yet intangible. It cannot give you, I can't give you a five bullet outline and say, this is what you do and it takes away your anxiety. I can give you the tools that you can use when you face that anxiety. Maybe basically you don't have anxiety and it's just sometimes in certain situations, maybe you're a very fearful woman. I, I don't know. You know and you can know how, you can find different tips in this video to help you. So in this verse it tells, it says, it's evil to have a heart of unbelief. And so I am going to write this verse on a three time, three by five card, index card, that will help me remember not to be fearful. Or you can write it on a sticky note. And if you go to the post, you have the verse nice and big. You can print that off in one of my printable packs that I have available. I write verses out all the time. I write them into a notebook. Sometimes I write them onto something and stick them somewhere. And it is so helpful. Number two is unbelief gets in the way of faith. So when you have unbelief, it's harder to have faith. So have you ever weeded your garden only to find that the more weeds you, that the more, we, more you weed, the more weeds seem to pop up as soon as it rains? And the summer, in the summer, we've had incredible amount of rain different summers or different periods of the summer and the weeds just pop. I used to have a garden, now I just have, I will just grow some small tomatoes and stuff and the weeds get incredible and everything is lush and green when it rains but a lot of it's weeds and those weeds are like our unbelief popping up and the flowers or the tomatoes you're growing, the plants, those are what you want and those represent your faith in God in this illustration where the weeds represent your unbelief and sometimes there's just more of it. That is how anxiety grows when we water it with our unbelief and unbelief blocks off our faith from growing because it is grown out of pro proportion. Another verse is Hebrews 3.14 For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. I love the word steadfast. Um, I look for it in the Bible and um, I think it's mostly often in the, it might be in the ESV and in the New America, uh, the New King James Version. And I just love it. It just speaks to my heart. So faith is kind of like a bike ride when you are in Christ. So when you are riding on a bike and going up and down the hills, you hold on and it's almost like a tandem bike where you have somebody riding it back. My dad, near the end of his life, he would talk about this and he would kind of have like a vision of it or something because he was sick and he would say that he was on the, the ride of his life and that Jesus was taking control of that, that bike and he was on a tandem bike with Jesus holding onto the handlebars guiding it. and we need to hold on to Jesus and know that he's holding on to the handles and directing our ride of life and our journey through life. So number three is persevere in your faith. In order to be saved, you need faith. If you're not faith saved, then if you have faith, you ask Jesus into your heart and your life and he will come in. But even when we're saved, sometimes our faith isn't as big as it should be. But did you know that in order to continue in your journey of life in Christ, you need your faith to be growing. And when you are wavering, you are filled with anxiety over whatever it is that causes you to worry and fret. And so anxiety can be like um, a wave where the waves are crashing in at you. Sometimes the, if you're out in the middle of the ocean, they're crashing against each other. If you watch them from a ship or a boat or a, or a ferry that goes further out to another island farther out, they're just crashing. And it's amazing. And Or if you're standing with your sand, your feet in the sand at, on a beach where the waves are big, it kind of... Um, comes underneath you, the currents of that wave, and your footing isn't strong, and you need to have faith in Jesus 
that he'll take care of you in that storm that you're facing. So don't give up. Keep hanging on. And just like the bike ride or just like the wave, have faith in Jesus. If you let go, you will fall off the bike. And if you let go of Jesus, you'll fall into unbelief. So you don't want to have that. If you let go, you will fall off the bike. And if you let go of Jesus, you will fall into unbelief. So hang on to Jesus. And um, number four is new birth is a life of faith. So you have new birth if you have Jesus in your life and you're moving through your journey in life and your faith can waver and especially if anxiety hits, even though you're saved, things aren't perfect. You're growing, you're growing closer to the Lord. You're growing as you read your Bible. And so that life isn't perfect yet you haven't reached heaven, but you want to be growing and changing. And you might make mistakes, but if you're changing and growing and your faith is growing, that's what is your faith is what your Christian life is all about. But why is it so hard? Second Corinthians five seventeen says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. So that is because this life is a battlefield. So we are to pray and pray and pray as if your life depended on it. And most of us, we neglect to pray. I don't pray as much as I should. I, I don't neglect getting in the Bible. And yes, I will pray and think thoughts of agreement with what I'm reading. But none of us, probably all of us, especially moms, can improve our prayer life more and always work on that because we're always having to do something else. Like we, we might be reading the Bible and realize, oh, we can't read it anymore. We have to make breakfast for our family or have to do this for our child or, or things will draw us away. We can't just ignore those things that need to be done. And so another verse is that you can write in an index card or you can print off from what you can get from the post that will be linked in the description box because you'll find this on YouTube or you'll find this in the post and you can read that. So this verse is from 2 Corinthians 5.17. I already read it, but I'll read it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I have these printed up and you can get them on a printable sheet where there's six on them. They're in color, but if you have black and white in your computer or only use black and white, they are, it works that way too. So number five is stand up to anxiety in the battle of your life. So anxiety might be something that's a battle of your life, something that you, for your whole life, you might be battling against. You may not get rid of the anxiety, but you can fight against it. You can get the Living Fearlessly printable pack in the um, post, the blog post, where I've written something similar to what I'm speaking. You can read it or you can watch my video and hear me talking about it, which may be a little more personable. But it's a printable pack. It has around, I don't remember because I have different ones. They have about five different printable pack, uh, printables in them. One of them will include the Bible verse, You'll have a gratitude page. I um, uh, think there's a gratitude page, a prayer page, and you'll have um, some Bible verses to look up. And I, a lot of them have uh, where you can write it out using the, um, the soak method, which I get into on another video. So I won't get, take time with that right now. So you are experiencing the battle of your life once you have believed in faith in the living God. And then you, you thought all your problems will be, would be solved when you became a Christian. And lo and behold, it becomes your battle because you're battling against Satan because Satan is more interested in coming against you than ever because now you're on Christ's side. And that's where some of the battles in that the Israelites have, like I'm reading Judges right now, so those battles that they're having to get out the rest of the, is, uh, the, the enemy out of their way and out of their land and the Philistines that they have battles against and the giants and everything, that is what we're facing. And when you read that, you can apply it to the things you're facing in your life. 
And if you can be defeated through anxiety and the anxiety defeats you, that will be the weapon that Satan uses against you. So you want to always fight against that anxiety. Use these verses to build your strength and your faith in Jesus. And look to Jesus for your strength through this battle that you're facing. And those who are truly born of God will take this battle seriously. And when you see this, bat is this as a battlefield, it puts away anxiety in its place. And you can fight this. You can do this. And I fail on this all the time. And that's why it's good for me to go and present all this to you because it sets it more in my head and in my mind so that hopefully I can fight the next battle a little better. Because none of us are perfect, but God loves us. And when we cry out to him, he will help us. So when anxiety hits you, it's the battlefield is prayer. And that's where you face um, help, have Jesus help you through it. So Luke 17, 6 says, So the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it will, would obey you. There are so many verses. First Thessalonians 5, 23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body persevere, preserved, blameless, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And are you living fearlessly because your hope is in God? How can you trust him more? You can answer in the comments and give me an idea. They'll encourage me and give me an idea of how I can trust the Lord more. And in putting that down in the comments, it cements it into you and into your heart. There are a lot of, um, when you go and see the, the video, I mean uh, the blog post, You'll have a lot in there that's visual also. You'll have um, a few um, graphics that will help and encourage you. One is by John Piper, a, a, a quote by him, Unbelief is the root of evil and the essence of evil. So I just want to leave you with all these things. And maybe you need to watch this video again to, to help get it into your mind and, and just put it into your heart. And just pray about it. And I will see you next time in the next video. So thanks.